It is great to see everybody. And hey, do I see a few new faces out there? I do. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is July 19th. It is Tuesday. Now, what I do on this show is I like to focus in on OTC and penny stocks that are, well, hot, that have great headlines, super technicals, or just buzzing all over the internet, and then I share them with you at the end of the day. Now remember, a penny stock is any stock under $5, so we could easily be looking at stocks on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, which is actually beneficial. You do know that those are free to trade. There's no transaction fees with major exchange stocks. I'd like to say that for OTC, but I gotta pay $14 round trip. I hate it. Now speaking of OTC, all this news over here is OTC market news. It's not a news feed. It's just news that caught my attention and I'm sharing with you. There's a lot of news out there. I can't give it all to you. But if you haven't had a chance to look at any of it, there's some of it. <laughs> so we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is where I go whenever I do research on an OTC stock. For one reason, it's updated every single day by FINRA and SEC. That means all that pertinent and important information I'm constantly looking for is right here, always current. If you're constantly going over to Google searching out this information, you're constantly wasting your time. Just come over here. Too simple, right? So how did our OTC market fare today? Pretty much exactly the way it did yesterday. We finished yesterday like we did today at $2.4 billion. We normally do about 2.1. We have done higher. I've seen it at 3.2 about a month ago, but after we hit these highs, we normally go under 2.1. So we just have this huge bounce. We have been sticking up over 2.1 for the last three days. Maybe it's the start of a trend. Our share volume, we're staying in the low teens. Yesterday, I think we were at 13.2. Today, we're at 13.3 billion. I do want to see it go up, but we were stuck under 10 billion and under 5 billion for at least two to three months. So this looks better than that by a long shot. And our trades, well, we've been stuck between 250 and 300,000 trades a day. A year ago, we were doing 500, 600,000 trades a day. So there's definitely room to grow. Now, if you were to plot the OTC market on a chart right now, we'd be going sideways, which isn't all bad. That's better than a bloody dip. So, our market didn't do too bad today. I didn't see any real explosive stocks that are the talk of the town or anything, but there were a lot of stocks taking gains and some of them with real low volume. Some of them had some really great news too. So, I've got an array of stock I want to share with you right now. You ready? So am I. Let's go. Our first stock we're taking a look at is a mystery of a stock to me, but it's a hot mystery. This is ticker SKFG Stark Focus Group. Now the company didn't have any news today, but they did have a filing come out and it was short and brief, but it was potent. Now what was a mystery about this company was its charts. When I went to see what the charts looked like, there was only a few days of trading. No matter how far back I went, there was no history. Now, I haven't done a deep dive on this company, but I did look around to see if I could find anything obvious. Nothing obvious. Maybe a ticker change, maybe expert market. I really don't know. What I do know is that they only had a filing and they haven't had a news press. I do believe they'll be coming out with a news press to announce what's in this filing, which I'm going to share with you here in just a minute. And when they do, I expect this to run again. So SKFG finished the day at $3 with 58% gains. Must be some aftermarket activity because it was just three and a quarter with 72% gains just before I started talking to you. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She has not got a verified profile or a verified transfer agent. Two green ticks we normally have up here and we like to see. I wouldn't panic with them not being there, but we do like to see them there. And the company is a shell risk. This means that they're in business, but they're not making any money. And that is the problem. And that's where the filing comes in. So what does this company do? Nothing. I know they say they work in retail apparel, but they don't. They're not doing anything right now. So what was the relative volume around the company today? <laughs> wow, she normally does 153 shares a day. Goodness gracious. Today she did 52,000. So that is a huge increase, even though it's not a huge number. Maybe we're getting on the car of the train before it's moving too fast. 
Let's see what our share structure is here. All right, I did look this up. We got nine, 10 million outstanding. The float, I get that from the unrestricted shares, which they don't have listed, but I did look it up and it is a measly 1.5 million shares. So if this company does 2 million shares tomorrow, that means they had to sell the entire float, every share on the market, and then go find more. And the only way you find more is for people who just bought them to sell them. And what happens is they don't want to sell them cheap. So they wait and the price goes up and up and up. And before you know it, you've got a stock that is just surging because of supply and demand. So that is a very strong possibility with this. Financials, we got nothing over there. Disclosures, well, that's the whole story, isn't it? Let's run on down here to this 8K right here. This came out today. As I said, it's real short and brief. This is the entire document right there. And everything above that dark line, you really don't need to look at. It's right below the dark line. And they tell us here on July 18th, 2022, Stark Focus Group announced that it is entering the drone unmanned aerial vehicle market with the launch of its new brand, Revolu Drones. The company aims to target both mainstream high-end segments of the market with a three-pronged approach by ensuring its products are rich in features, simple to operate, and kept in an affordable price range for the retail market. The company also wishes to announce the launch of Revolu Drones brand website, that is revolutdrones.com. The company currently expects its initial range of drone models to be ready for wider commercial release in an estimated time frame of four to six months, and it will be made available to consumers directly via its website and selected retail channels. So they're going into a business that's going to make them some money, and they plan on actually being rolling in four to six months. That's what's got this stock running. And with the news press on top of it, letting everybody know, because this is all we get right now is this filing, this should take off again. Although I think starting at a price of $3, it's a little high. Let's go see what that chart, that little chart looks like. As always, we are doing our charting over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You like it? You can have it. Not mine. Go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for a free trading account, keep your account open, and you can have your own TOS. That's Think or Swim. So this is SKFG, and I've got it on a four-hour, six-month chart, but as you can see, we don't have six months here. Matter of fact, if I hover over this first low bubble bar, if you look right here, you can see what the date is. It is June 1st. The very next green bar is July 15th. So we have no trading for 45 days. And if I go back a year, you can see there is nothing more. That is all we've got. But to give you the real perspective, that's what we've got. You've got one day in June, and then you've got a few days here in July. That's all the chart. I can't tell you why, but this is what we've got to work with. So it started off here a few days ago at $1.71. Hit a high here of $3.25. That is over 100% gain. She just went sideways after hitting her high, and she has settled on $3 right now. Technicals look strong, but they definitely look like they're pulling back right there. That is all the pullback. Tough to give you any more information about the chart since that's all we've really got. But what I do expect is what I said. A news press should probably follow up behind this, wouldn't you think? So if a news press comes out on this and more people see that, with a float of 1.5 million, this thing could surge. It could really fly high. I realize it's a wee bit expensive, but if the volume comes in, it may still be worth a play. The next stock did have news today. This is ticker IFXY, Infrax Systems. Finished the day at 0045 with 25% gains. She's on the pink tier as well. She's current, and she's got those green ticks I'm telling you to look for, the verified profile and the transfer agent verified. So this looks good. Now this company is a shell company, not a shell risk. Shell risk is bad, but a shell company is okay. That means they're just an empty apartment waiting for a tenant to move in. So we're looking for a reverse merger or an acquisition, something. Now their description here, well, pretty much says in a nutshell what I'm gonna show you, but they're doing it now. Infrac Systems Inc. is a brand incubator and accelerator. That means they take little companies and they help them grow and become successful. 
Infrax plans to build a portfolio of revenue generating product brands with high growth potential. Now this is where it begins. The company expects to close its first acquisition of MyPulp in July 2022. That's right now, folks. MyPulp is a U.S. master importer and distributor of specialty nostalgic food and beverage products catering to the Latin American market segment. And that is it in a nutshell. But I will share the news with you today because it does say more. So what was the relative volume around this news today? About eightfold, nine. She went from eight million to 75 million. So she's definitely not under the radar. Share structure, ouch. Way too many shares, two billion shares. I hate big share counts on the float, especially if you're gonna have this for a long hold because it's just screaming reverse merger at some point. But if you're just playing a day trade or a short swing, shouldn't bother you at all. As long as the stock is making gains, who really cares, right? Financials, they're going to have Zip because they're a shell company. Disclosures, got anything new over here? Uh, nope, we have no new disclosures. So all we really have is that news. Now, as I said, there was a dead spot from 2018 to 2022. So you've got four years of silence here and there's no news about when they went pink or anything. All we've got is a piece of news in May and news today. The one in May says Infrac Systems Inc. announces agreement and plan of merger to acquire food distributor MyPulp. So they knew in advance. And then today's news, they announced that MyPulp acquisition is expected to close in the week of July 25. Now they tell us in here that Infrac System announced today that it expects the acquisition of MyPulp to close the week of July 25. Now that's not July 25th. That's the week of July 25th. The acquisition will formally close once all the bookkeeping items associated with the transfer of the shares have been finalized on the company's official shareholder records. And the acquisition is non-dilutive to the current shareholders and will not require the issuance of any new stock. Excellent. MyPulp is a U.S. master importer and distributor of specialty nostalgic food and beverage products catering to the Latin American segment. MyPulp generated over $22 million of revenue last year, and the company is expanding rapidly to other crossover market segments with new and exciting products. The president of IFXY says, we have big plans for this company. We started MyPulp in 2015 with about 650000 in revenue. We see no reason why we cannot continue to aggressively grow the company going forward. The CEO of the company says, I cannot imagine a better result for our current shareholders. We are basically delivering to them a $22 million revenue company with exciting growth potential at no cost to them. We are already looking forward to other great companies we can bring into the IFXY family. IFXY has developed a short list of potential acquisition targets. Oh, that is excellent to hear. And my pop acquisition is the first of several the company expects to complete in the coming months. Oh boy, stick around. IFXY will be filing a request with FINRA for a name and ticker change. And as previously announced by the board of directors, there are no current plans for a reverse split or an increase in the number of authorized shares. Lots of information there, folks. They're about ready to close their first acquisition. They've got a few more acquisitions sitting on the table for the next few months to come. They're changing their ticker. They're changing their name. They're not going to have a reverse split. And they're not going to add any shares. Outstanding. So let's go see what that chart looks like. We are looking at a six month, four hour chart, a real six month chart for IFXY. Our high back here is 0 0.0123 and our low is 0 0.0022. And right now we're at 0 0.045. She cracked that 200 with a very, very deep fall, stayed down here for quite a while. And when she tried to get back, the 200 met right here in the middle, price and the 200, but she wasn't able to get on top and she's been busting her head up against this 200 for quite a while until today. Today she took off. And if you look at our oscillators down here, all of them, and it really doesn't matter which one it is, if any of them are pointing up, it's good. They're all pointing up, it's great. Volume is really strong on this stock, at least steady, 
considering that she hasn't had any news from 2018 until the news we just looked at, it's strange. She hasn't been doing any business, but people have still been trading this stock. And as you can see, she ripped through the 200 today. Once she got on top of that 50, she took off. Let's look at that 20 day, one hour view. Well, now she's on top of the 200, but not getting anywhere. She's bouncing on the top of it until today when she ripped. Technicals are strong all the way down the board. This is our PPO, our percentage price oscillator. It's a lot like the MACD, except the MACD works with the price. This works with a percentage of the price. They're very similar, but there are some major differences. Then you have your ADX, this measures trend. And you know what their RSI is? And that is just coming back up into the overbought. So it is really, really strong on the hourly. Five day, five minute. We're back under the 200, beating our head against it, trying to get on top. And there was a very strong, fast push today. Matter of fact, she hit her high of 0049 at five minutes after 10. So she jumped from 0035 to 0049 in about 30 minutes. And that is my exit point on a morning surge. If I am in a surge that is just running without stopping and I can hang on for the full time, I am out by 10, 10 05. Even if it looks like it might go on, I am normally out simply because at 10, 10 05, there seems to be this pause that the entire market takes, like it's deciding what it wants to do. So rather than wait for that coin to come down and see what it is, I just get out. I take my morning surge as a play all by itself. If I wanna get back into it, then I'll reconsider because that's what happens most of the time, a very fast drop. Now it might come back, but look at all the frustration, all the time you had to wait for it to come back. And rather than fall any further, you could see it was waiting for the 20 day SMA to come to it and then it bounced right off that 20 day bounced off the 20 day again here, and then crushed through all of the SMAs and is now coming back to the 20. It's showing a lot of homage to that 20. And if you take a line, I got the right one, I do, from the bottom of the surge to the top of the surge and cut it in the middle. You can do it mathematically or you can eyeball it. But what I'm looking for is the attitude of this gain. I wanna see it keep more than 50% of everything it threw out. And this is doing that. As a matter of fact, look, it is actually now, I'm just in the ballpark, but you can see it's very, very close. This came down and is bouncing off of the halfway point, the 50% gain mark. So this is a strong stock. It doesn't want to go beneath this, and it looks like it's ready to bounce again. Our 200 is pointing up. Technicals, we got a crossover, just like the MACD on the PPO is impressive. You want to see this going up. Our MACD has just hit the signal line. It too is a crossover. Don't worry too much about this pointing down. It isn't going to hurt the price at all. As a matter of fact, you see what we got going on here? Do you see how it's doing that? It's opening up like a fifth fish mouth. That spread right there, when it does that, is a guaranteed climb. Guaranteed. So when you see this red and this blue start to go wide apart, the price is going to fall. If you see them coming together, but you have to have the PPO on the top, and your ADX on the bottom. That's why I have them set up that way. So it kind of looks like an hourglass. You see the mirror image. I actually use that as a technical. So this looks like there's a very strong chance it could continue running. And remember, they're gonna close this deal on the week of the 25th. I don't know how many days that is. What? That's next week probably. That's probably next week. So they're gonna have a news press come out that they close this deal. Now, I do believe that news about the closing runs more than the actual news press of the closing. It seemed the facts aren't as juicy as the speculation. So I don't know how much it'll run, but I think you need to watch it. You start seeing volume increase on this. Not to mention they did say they have more acquisitions on the table for the next few months. This could be a nice play to hold for a few months just to see how much gains it gets. But do your own DD. There's a lot more to know about this company, I'm sure. Look at their disclosures or their 10K, 10Q, whichever they have. They'll tell you everything in there. We're now going to focus in on a company that I've mentioned quite a few times over the last few days. This is Voyager Digital, ticker VYG VQ. 
The Q represents that they have filed for bankruptcy, which they did on July 11. All that day, they also fell from the OTCQX, the top best tier on the OTC market, all the way down here to the pink. They finished the day at almost 20 cents with 40% gains. They are on the pink tier and current, and they've got all the green ticks that we would hope to see, and they've got independent directors. Now, this is a company you probably know. Voyager Digital is a crypto trading platform. Matter of fact, I've got the sites here. This is one of their sites for Voyager, and they also own Coinify. And they've got these sites for different countries around the world. Now, I am pointing this out to you because, first off, most bankruptcies go through restructuring. And they don't go away. If the company has any value, any branding, the company sticks around, gets fixed, and gets put back on the market. Like Hertz, like Revlon. Now, this company hasn't got brand like those two companies. But what they do have are freaking assets. Folks. This company's got so much money, I don't know why they filed for bankruptcy, but I can not see it being finalized. I can see this company going right back into business, probably in a short course of time at that. So, what was the relative volume around this company today? Considering that she doesn't have any news, I just dove into the financials to get the information I got. Her volume today, she only did double only double she is under the radar and i gotta tell you folks these bankruptcy plays have been paying off well but this one should pay off a lot better i think you're going to agree when i show you what i found so she went from 2.5 million to 4 million not even double share structure what does this company got oh bloody heck i'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go have to look this up we got 191 million outstanding i always go to the unrestricted shares that's as close as you're gonna get now they do tell us here it's 166 million as of well new year's of last year we'll see if that's right i'm gonna go look it up and i'm gonna throw it right up there for you and if i can't find it i'm just gonna put three question marks and if you don't see anything up there uh, it means i forgot let's hope i put something up there uh financials what do they show off over here for money that they're making well, as of June of last year, they did $175 million. And really, that's not what I want to show you. I just want to jump right into one of their financials, their most recent one. And I've got a couple things here I want to point out to you. So this one goes right up until March 31st, 2022. This is before the bankruptcy. So I will give you that. First thing I want to show you is how much do they actually have? Folks, they tell us here that this is in the thousands, just like the OTC. So we got to put three zeros behind any numbers that we see. The number they give us for total assets for March 31, 2022, is five billion nine hundred and ninety-eight million. That's right, five billion. Let's just call that six billion dollars in assets just a couple months ago. What else have I got here to show you to blow you away? Transaction revenue. Over the last nine months, they did $163 million. A year ago, they only did $57 million. So they actually did more money here recently than they did in the past, but they filed bankruptcy. What else do I have here that is tickling? Oh yes, here are their subsidiaries. All of these Voyagers and all of these Conifies, each one is a subsidiary in different countries. So they've got lots and lots of subsidiaries. And what else do they have a lot of? Right down here, it's coming, it's coming right there. Crypto assets held as of March 31st, 2022 and June 30th, 2021. Crypto assets had consisted of the following in thousands. Again, you got to put three zeros behind these. So they had 25,000 Bitcoin. 25,000. Now I know the price has dropped, but 25,000 times $20,000 each, that comes up to a lot of money. $1.1 billion. And when you add up all their cryptos that they've got here, that is $3.4 billion. And they tell us in this financial, they don't just own crypto, they don't just sell crypto, they stake crypto, they loan crypto, they have lots of revenue streams coming in. 
So why are they filing bankruptcy? I honestly don't know. But do I think they're going to die? No, not with this sort of backing. So I think this company is going to come out smelling like a rose. And if we watch this closely, we can get in on pennies on the dollar. Let's go take a look at that chart. So we are taking a look at Voyager Digital, and we're going to have to do it on two charts because there's actually two tickers. You've got the ticker before they filed for bankruptcy, and then you have the ticker after they filed for bankruptcy, the one with the Q. And that one has only got a few days of activity on it. All the history is on the original ticker. So let's take a look at that six month, four hour. And the first thing that stands out is the pennies on dollars. Look at the high bubble. We are over $20 on this bubble, and our low bubble is just over 20 cents pennies on the dollars folks and she has been falling hard this entire time and then we had a huge volume jump right here what day is that that is the 22nd of last month i'm not quite sure what it was but it was a big drop and lots of volume has come in and it all looks like sell volume at the 22 cent mark now i'm just going to jump on over to the five day five minute and i'm going to bring that chart over here because this is the one that has my PPO on it. I really like my PPO. So we have a low bubble and a high bubble all in the same day. And since then, well, she's pretty much just keeping even keel. She's going from about 14 cents to 24 cents. But she really isn't going anywhere. She's sticking in them low 20s. So I think this is an excellent stock, folks. I think this is an excellent price, pennies on the dollar right now. If you got in and she did go back up to $20, that would be a 10,000% gain. That is 100 times your investment. Now, I don't expect this company to go anywhere with $6 billion in assets. Do you? I mean, their websites are still up. They're still trading crypto. So how bad can it be? So what I expect is a news press to say they're going to restructure whatever they got to fix. That's probably going to make this thing bounce. And then, of course, there'll probably be a dip when it gets quiet during the restructuring. And then when they get back on the market and that Q falls off and it just goes back to the F, this thing is going to run from 20 cents to a dollar to three dollars to 20 dollars. And you're going to be going chun ching all the way to the bank. And finally, last but not least, are our leftovers. Folks, I see a lot of stocks through the day, but because of our time constraints, I can only focus in on so many. So I've got a few here that were on my table. I'm going to give you the tickers and the catalyst, and I'll let you take it from there. First one we are looking at is ticker XALL, Exhale Holdings. Finished the day with a 7% gain, but I think there's more to be gotten. She had news today, exhales to acquire AI growth hub and expand AI based solutions. Just picking a few sentences out here, exhales holdings will acquire AI growth hub and a share exchange agreement and will become a wholly owned subsidiary. The new company is based in St. Petersburg, Florida and provides business solutions that focus on acquiring customers and enriching the customer's experience. With this new machine learning advertising audience software, they will be able to increase client profitability by 30% in just 30 days. And then down here, they tell us that AI Growth Hub expects to contribute approximately $7 million to the company's revenue over the next 12 months, and they expect this transaction to close by July 31st. And taking a quick peek at those financials, they only made about a half a million last year, and now they're talking $7 million. The next one we can take a look at is APLD, Applied Blockchain. She did 100% gains. Now, this is a NASDAQ stock. She wasn't a penny go to two cents. No, she was a dollar six, went to two dollars and twelve cents. This had news today, and the only thing I can really see is that they've changed their financial guidance, their projections, what they say they're gonna make in the next quarter. They tell us here that they updated their fiscal fourth quarter 2022 financial guidance from 5.9 million to 7.2 million. And again, if we look at their financials, they got nothing there. All right. The last quarter. The last quarter, they did a million dollars of revenue. They're talking five to seven million now. But even worse than that, it cost them two million to make one million. So anything above 
minus a million is good. They look like they should be in the money here shortly. And the last one we got is milk. No, not M-I-L-K, M-I-L-C. This is Millennium Sustainable Ventures Core. First thing I want you to notice is that she had 80% gains today on the news I'm about to show you. Though it's really a filing. The other thing I want you to see, I can't actually show you the float, but I can tell you it's under 9 million. It's never more than the outstanding share, so it is a real low float. And this is the filing that came out today on an 8K. Love those 8Ks. Millennium Sustainable Ventures Core leases from PW Michigan Care a 550,000 square foot high-tech greenhouse located in Marangold Township, Michigan. Milk believes that pending license approval, the property will be the largest cannabis cultivation facility in Michigan and one of the largest greenhouse cannabis cultivation facilities in the United States. So there you go, folks. Hope you can make use of this. So there you go, folks. You got six stocks. All of them are doing something, got something going on. Do some more DD. See what's happening there. My favorite out of all of them is Voyager Digital. I think with $6 billion and saying they're in a bankruptcy, that ain't going to last long. And that price of $0.22, cents, that ain't going to last long either. But do your DD. Dive in. You may find something even better than I found. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.